All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Over Your New Reader. Sorry, we're a little bit late. Uh, we were just chatting. <laughs> we were just we're chatting. Just having... <laughs> it's because we hate you. We hate all. No, I love you yeah. all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just, I missed your face, Jesse. So I'm just like, tell me about your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just like, like I say every time you're on here, I'm like, this is just my uh, my secret campaign to get you to be one of my best friends. And that's why I have you on. <laughs> oh, it's fine. You don't need to, it doesn't need to be a secret campaign. I'm cool with it. You just have to ask me to talk about nerdy stuff and you're well, already so on the best friend list. I was list, like, hey, so. would you want to be on again? You're like, I was hoping you'd ask me. I was like. <laughs> I was like <laughs> waiting for you. I was actually. I, there was I would ask that was you like, more. <laughs> I was like, I was going to be, I was going to reach out at some point and be oh. like, Hey, do you want to have me on? Cause I will totally be on anytime. Yes. And I'm so glad that you came on again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so everybody here, sorry. We just, sometimes I start a show as if I'm mid conversation, which is not well, very. Technically, technically we are kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who haven't seen her, uh, I'm sure you have seen them before on the show. This is the third time. Yes. Yes. Third time. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Gender is here. You can see all of her deets and stuff in the comments. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. Oh, and one of the most much. dedicated YouTubers I know because no one would attempt to make such a long Matrix video and go <laughs> at it so many times despite YouTube being like, what if you didn't? Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, to be fair, I, I am actually part of now a long tradition of apparently trans YouTubers making uh, feature length films about the Matrix movies. <laughs> because uh, I know- today. Yeah, Sophie from Mars, Sophie from Mars and Sarah Zedig are two trans YouTubers who did videos, like a literally two hour long video about the Matrix sequels. Yeah. And then another YouTuber, um, Aranok, uh, is do releasing a Matrix video uh, as well. And I'm like, this is just, this is becoming a trend. Apparently just trans YouTubers need at some point to just make their own two hour like Matrix video at some point. It's a rite of passage now. Exactly. It's how we know you're actually a trans YouTuber. That's how, yeah. that's how we figure it out. Have you talked about the Matrix? <laughs> yeah. For how long? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we are here. I saw Jesse's post, uh, I don't know, last month or I don't know, whatever. But I saw you're playing Guardians and I was like, mm -hmm. I need to read more Guardians. <laughs> it's a good Do excuse you want to read some guardians yes yes because i've never actually um i've never read the guardians comics like at all period like i've, I've encountered yeah. them in like crossover events and stuff but never sit down and like read a dedicated run well yeah and same for me actually because um i've read part of this i thought i read more of it but uh uh i read a lot of like cosmic marvel annihilation mm -hmm. that's like the saga that also ties into this so if you haven't read i'm so sorry because i was going through and i was like they reference this a lot um, I was I was like trying to I was like assuming it's like one of those like we'll, we'll talk about it it's like one of those comic book things just like yeah I'm sure I missed 50 billion storylines before oh. and also that intercut into this one too and I'm like yeah it's just a whole thing typical yeah, yeah co the cosmic marvel saga which like annihilation annihilation conquest all of that was like what first got me into comic books because I got into comic books because of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Wonder Woman those mm -hmm. are the two movies and I've told this story a million times but that's what got me I haven't heard books. it so. Well, those were that's what got me into comic books. So I was like, I want to know more. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I read Annihilation, and so that has bits and pieces of this in there. So I knew about Quasar, and Moon Dragon, and Dra all that people, all people outside of the movie. Uh, but this is my first time like really reading it through. Mm -hmm. But I was also inspired after playing Guardians because that was like the best comic book game I've ever played. It was really so. Yeah, my my thought on the like my brief thoughts on the game because we're here to talk about the comic. But like, I was so impressed with the writing of that game. Yeah. The gameplay was okay. It didn't knock my socks off. It got a little bit repetitive towards the end. It wasn't bad, but it just it didn't feel like deep enough. But the writing was easily some of the best writing and like the art design mm. was phenomenal. Absolutely. Like it felt, I was shocked because I, you know, Chris Pratt aside, I love the Guardians like characters and their versions in the movie. So I thought it was going to be a really heavy lift for this game to like make me feel like these weren't like Guardians yeah. light or like diet Guardians. But I was like, at the end of it, I'm like, I actually kind of like these versions more. Absolutely. I felt the same way. And like, I was worried because uh, I'm a huge Mantis fan. Mm. I always refer to her as my sweet baby angel. I have like this little figure collection downstairs, like a signed picture by Palm. Like I'm a huge fan. And that game made me love her even more because she was just, she's she more comic so accurate, great. but she's so perfect. 
she is so amazing in that game. I love her like kind of like manic energy that, but yeah. just like like constantly like playing off of people and like having precognition stuff and like seeing different futures yeah. and like she was she was so wonderful. And I just spoil too much. We shouldn't talk too much about the game, but for those who played the game who haven't read Dan Abnett's or vice versa. I didn't realize how much there would be kind of like some oh, commonalities yeah. in between the two, like with the the church and everything mm -hmm. else. And so I was very pleased. I was going through there. I was like, oh wait. I thought I that you this. I thought you picked that on purpose. No, I just asked her recommendations. I was like, hey, what is the best like Guardians Galaxy for us to read? And everyone's like, oh, Dan Abbott's run. Interesting. Like, yeah, okay. I, I thought you I thought you actually picked it because the the villains of the game they they play a decent role within yeah. this. And I was like, oh, that must be the reason. Though that probably is like the game writers are probably like, this is the best run. We'll we'll reference that. So there's probably a yeah, reason that makes for sense. it. Yeah. Um, for people at home, I can't give a, a normally we do like a little summary at the beginning. That's very hard for me to do for this because <laughs> mm -hmm. so much was happening. And as much as I want to be someone that remembers every detail, that's not me. And so when I go back to explain something, that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But what I, I can say <laughs> is that this is sort of the like original, um, version of the new guardians of the galaxy coming together as we know in the movies so it mm. used to be a team before they do reference that but like this is the first time amidst the annihilation saga or whatever uh where peter quill brings together the guardians of the galaxy that would then inspire the movie so you have mm. a lot of the main characters there you've got groot rocket drax gamora and you've got adam warlock Mm -hmm. who has not yet been introduced into the movies but we know he's been, but it's been yeah i've been hinting it hinted at and definitely gonna be coming and they look a little bit different <laughs> than what I'm, actually not a, I'm not a fan of the look but that we'll talk about that and they, they do change that later on like from what mm -hmm. i understand like snippets i've read where they match the movies yeah. and like the video game yeah because they, they definitely have a much more like fun yeah they're, they're they have like the nova core space copy look to them oh and absolutely. i'm and i i, I always dis unless like it's the intention of like if we're talking about the nova yeah. core and they're meant to be space cops i dislike space cop uniforms for a myriad of reasons it's also why i just like um i'll mention start like star trek discovery season three they had those like yeah. gray uniforms and i'm like uh that feels very like space fascisty kind of feel to it I'm yeah i'm like, eh, not about it yeah, I agree because the, the they definitely come into their own. You can see where like the little hints of what they're becoming. But yeah, mm -hmm. this, this the Guardians uniform of this time is so drab. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. It's boring and dull, and like just makes them all like unique. You know, it, it, it loses yeah. their unique flavor to them. Uh, real quick, so comment quipping is my least favorite part of the MCU. So that's a a point in the front's favor for me. I guess some people are talking about how there's more or less quips. Mm. I will say that in this, it's like a mockumentary style. So it makes mm -hmm. this like starting the funniness <laughs> Yeah, is that like they have some action, but then they have the mockumentary where they're like, it's it's for the sake of the like ship's recordings or ship's mm. logs, but it's them talking. But I really enjoy that because one. I loved it. Yeah. They recap some things that happen in case there's a lot happening. So if you're a new reader or even over here like me, it's like, okay. What's good? What's that? What? Ha <laughs> where? Who? What? Which I felt like a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually so really funny. appreciated, like, at the beginning of every comic uh, issue that we were reading, they had, like, a little recap of, like, the yeah. story. Even of issues that I had already just read. And I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> I read so it, but wonderful. I don't know if I understood it all. Well, yeah, because so. there's so much. And there's so many, like, players mm. that, like, thank God I've read Annihilation. Because at least I have some semblance. But if you had thrown, like... She are and like create me mean like you did at me. <laughs> yeah, I bless your heart. Like, yeah. <laughs> and even then I'm like, okay, whoa. Because mm -hmm. this series had to go along with the major events of like Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest, War of the Kings, which is where the Cree and like inhumans, mm -hmm. all that stuff happens. Secret invasion gets brought in too. Yeah, like a lot. Like the first like scrolls being like there's a lot happening. But if yeah. you just stick to like the main bits of like character growth and things they go through, it's very interesting. But I yeah. won't say oh, that's a hit on it. <laughs> well, I actually like what I liked mm -hmm. about it is um, while it like is very clear as, as I was reading, like, OK, there's like two or three issues about secret invasion and then there's yeah. the War of the Kings, uh, especially the secret invasion part. 
Um, what I loved about it is it was very clearly meant to be like tying to that storyline that must have been mm -hmm. going on around at the same time that this was released. But it didn't like distract from the story. It didn't feel like a forced yeah. part of it. It actually felt natural because it kind of matched with the themes that the comic was already dealing with. Because this is a brand new Guardians team. And so they were already distrusting each other. And so to add in the scrolls about being like, who's a scroll? Who do we know? It might be like, we're trying to like figure out who the scrolls are, like kind of mirrored this distrust of each other feeling that they had. So I was like, oh, that like, I, I'm sure it was like a mandate that, you know, he had, Abbott had to like do is like, okay, I guess I got to write some scroll stuff in here, but it actually worked really well with the story that he was telling. So I actually really appreciated that within this run that, well, it clearly was serving the grander masters of the big Marvel tie-in stuff. It also still felt um, like really uh, natural to the story being told. Yeah, absolutely agree. And what's so fun, like great and fun about this team is that because it's new, right? Mm -hmm. the, the ongoing joke was like, like, oh, we're Guardians of the Galaxy. And everyone's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 go. It's such a callback to an interesting time, like in in the in comics, because it was before like, because there's this thing that happens, especially with Marvel comics, uh, where it's like the we, no one knows who they are like i remember before guardians came out there was like all this talk of like who's the guardians of the galaxy who the hell is this like oh, no one yeah. knows who that is and now they're like one of the linchpins of the entire mcu uh and everyone knows who they are and so it's like this interesting like time capsule looking back at the guardians at the oh, time yeah. this comic was written being like oh people are like who's the guardians of the galaxy i'm like oh wow these people really don't know it's kind of fun well yeah because they're such bits and pieces mm -hmm. and the fact that like it was really interesting to see how Peter brought them together because he basically picked this amalgamation of people. He's like, okay, we need like a cosmic defender force because mm -hmm. Richard Ryder Nova recommended it, who's my favorite Nova. No, <laughs> yep. I think he's very handsome and cool. <laughs> uh, and so he has Mantis, as we learn eventually, use her like uh, her mind abilities to kind of convince them to join mm -hmm. the team. And eventually that comes up, but the team still comes back together. But I think that's, you know, that's such a fun way because you have this group. It's not like, it's very different than Avengers, even though they he calls them, some people call them like the cosmic Avengers because mm -hmm. you have these sort of like very professional <laughs> superheroes. But kind of like in the game mentions too, like you have this group of almost criminals. <laughs> yeah. This random amalgamation of people that don't, on paper wouldn't work and eventually do work but like they don't work perfectly so it, nothing ever really flows the way it should be but that's mm -hmm. what's the whole fun of it yeah it's like they're 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 a dysfunctional family like if the avengers are like uh for the most part are like a decently well put together well-oiled machine for the most part um the guardians are like the dysfunctional family that like get together at like a family function and always are always oh, yeah. arguing and yelling at each other but we'll still like love each other at the end which i love Mm -hmm. And one thing I love about the comic book that's not in the movies um, is the addition of Quasar and Moondragon mm -hmm. for a few reasons. Obviously, a couple is very nice. I'm glad that they're in love with each other. That's very cool. That was good to see. <laughs> I did like that. Um, especially because throughout like the both books, they're like, I don't know, their connection so special. Um but Quasar is a character I've always really loved. I was always bummed that she's not in the greater story. Because mm -hmm. she's so cool. But I understand also because she's kind of overpowered. And you can't introduce her before Captain Marvel because they have a similar power base or whatever. But uh, I always love how she fits into the team mm -hmm. a lot. Um, <clears throat> but also what? I love the differences between the more... Just the differences between the whole team. It's very different. <laughs> One of the things that I really loved, and this is the thing that kind of shocked me a little bit too um, in the game, but also here in, in the comic, is Gamora not being a romantic interest because, um, oh, you know, I, you so watch glad. the MCU. You, yeah, exactly. You watch the MCU and it's like, oh, Gamora and Star, Star Lord, they're supposed to be together. They're the ones that like have the yeah. romance. And then I, I was playing the game and I'm like, I actually really enjoy the fact that Gamora is not interested in Peter at all. Like they're just friends. Oh, and I, yeah. I like, I love that platonic friendship so much more than like the forced Hollywood style romance. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then the comic does that too, where Gamora is just badass fighter. And she it's alluded to that. She's had a relationship with Adam Warlock before this, but it's also like, I don't know him. Like he's changed now and yeah. she definitely doesn't have a thing for Peter at all. Um, yeah. So I, I really liked that. Like, there was no romantic tension um, between these characters. Cause I, I do think that that's just a thing that like all Hollywood movies have to have, where it's like, Oh, we're going to shove them together. So. 
Right, because she's the female character of the group. Yeah, we got to have... Well, she's got to be with a main guy. Mm -hmm. The girl has to be with a dude that has to just... That has to be the thing. It's like... (sighs) It's like, for me, when people try to put Wonder Woman with, like, Batman or Superman, I'm not a fan, personally. That's not for me. Mm. I'm like, just because she's the girl in the group doesn't mean you have to. I don't... Gamora apparently has been around. (laughs) I was like, good for you. Yeah, good for Gamora. Yeah, my... This is an aside, but, like, I actually don't mind Wonder Woman with... Batman, I I think that that decently worked in the Justice League animated show. I thought they like bounced off each other in a fun way. Her with Superman, I despise though, because that's just like, oh, they're just the two superpower. They're big and strong, so they'll obviously bone. And I'm like, no, 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 please don't. It's only Superman and Lois. I, mm-hmm. That's a, that's a trope. That's the thing that I'm okay with forever. Mm-hmm. I'm you don't need to too. mess with perfection. Yep. It's just sweet and nice. Keep it that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe you know, people from different genders can actually be just friends right? instead of having to feed into this whole dumb like we need they need to bone or hate each other sort of thing. It's, it's, it's silly. Well, and Gamora and Peter's relationship in the comic and in the game. Not to keep referencing the game, but I know it's fresh in our minds. Mm-hmm. I like it because she just. <laughs> It's almost not even platonic in a way, the way that they kind of argue back and forth, which I like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like he's kind of in charge, but he can barely contain the group. Yeah. He like he can barely keep them in in reins and and they're just still gonna do whatever they do. And they have no reference for him, but they care about him, but not in a way that like you would a regular leader. <laughs> yeah, I actually to be fair, this is actually one spot of the comic that I actually will say I I I don't want to say I dislike, but like yeah. less than um, the game and the movies is that I actually found Peter to be kind of boring mm-hmm. in this. He's just sort of like bland leader dude. Uh, he's like, I got to put the team together. He doesn't really have that like particular character quirk about him. He's just sort of like the bland leader man. Whereas, um, again, sorry to keep referencing the game. I actually think the game's Peter is the best because he still has that... Um, childish like man like man child feel to him like that the chris pratt mcu version has but the game version he does still have a little bit of maturity to him like he, yeah. he's not he's not completely like a big man child like he does when when things are down he will actually try to work together and build the team up and like get things done and actually think through things intelligently and, and care about others as opposed to like chris pratt's version who's just like i'm a big man child who will eventually get around to doing the right thing when <laughs> i feel like it you know yeah, I, I definitely think I, I agree with that because I think in this book, the other characters that surround uh, Star-Lord are a little more interesting. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. like one-off characters, like we get uh, Jack later, mm-hmm. who I think is very funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I hate this cosmic shit sort of guy. Um, and I, I'm really happy with the way that the movies have affected Peter when the way that he, because he definitely changed the adapt to more mm-hmm. movie focus, like a lot of Marvel characters do later. Mm. And I think that makes him a more fun leader. You see yeah. him as more charismatic. And you get bits of this. He is charismatic, but not enough that you're like as yeah. into him. He as doesn't stand out compared race. to anybody else. Yeah, he doesn't stand out compared no. to anybody else. I think that's a character design thing too. Because mm-hmm. you look at him and you're like, okay, random brunette guy. Yeah, he just looks like an everyday dude. He's just like bland dude. Which is good that they change their costumes later because you look at him and you're like, this is just a dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, fine. <laughs> he's, he's all right. Yeah, he's like he's fine to look at, but I'm not I'm not particularly memorable, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm trying to think of what the other thing, another character that I actually didn't I I'm sorry that we keep doing comparisons, uh <laughs> like chat, but it's just it's just where my brain goes to. Yeah. I just didn't like Rocket as well here as well until later on. Like Rocket kind of fell into the background quite a bit. Yeah. And then I did like finally about halfway through when there's this split uh of the group, like the Guardians split up. Uh then Rocket sort of takes control. I was like, all right, well. Peter screwed up, so I have to be the one pick up the ball and bring this team together, uh, and like finding like the B team of of the Guardians, yeah. um, and and actually together, which I actually also liked because um, that that's like another type of version of Rocket that I don't really see because you see in in most of the other versions of him that he is like. Ah, I don't want to do this. I'll do this because, like, I technically have a heart of gold underneath my gruff exterior. Yeah. Whereas this rocket actually seems like you know I am trying to help. Like, I actually do care. Like, I actually want to get out there. And yeah, I'm kind of a jerk, but he does, like, actually wish to, like, do the right thing. Um, as opposed to the Rocket in the in the other media where he's just, like, sort of has to be dragged along. <laughs> yeah. Because he becomes, like, a co-captain. A mm-hmm. co-leader of the team later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I think makes him way more interesting because he has the capability. 
Yeah, he definitely can. He definitely has that like capability of being a leader character that he just yeah. does not take the mantle of anywhere else, which I, I enjoyed seeing here. And I will warn everybody, Groot is not as cute. Just be prepared. Yeah, yeah, Groot, Groot is, is not as big of a player in this as mm -hmm. people he's like might barely, expect. He's barely there. He has like yeah. I think like one moment in the in the comic where he like comes in and rescues everybody, and that's about it. Yeah, it takes some time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gamora continues to do some really cool stuff throughout. I, I I didn't have a problem at all with Gamora's portrayal. I thought she was great. Mm -hmm. Oh, her her sacrifice moment. Um, so cool, was right? Badass, and I love that it has ramifications. So for for audience to give you a quick uh, recap of it, they there's like these anomalies that keep popping up that the Guardians have to like go and investigate and deal with. And so one of the anomalies that they face is on this really cool Dyson sphere which uh, Dyson Sphere is like this thing, like it's a big sphere built around a sun. And they're protected underneath this shield that they need to, uh, that protects them from the sun's rays because they're so close to it on the Dyson Sphere. Um, but there's like this big zombie mass thing of people, like the anomaly caused like everyone on the ship to like be shoved into this weird, like gloopy monster zombie thing, which was gross and really cool. And the, the way they decide to blow it up to kill it is to open up the shield and let the sun take them and then close and then teleport out of there. But the teleporters don't work. So she had Gamora, since she has a healing factor, she has to uh, be like, all right, well, I guess I'll go turn off the sun shield, which means I have to walk through the sun's rays, which is great when I'm so close to it. And she like just basically gets like annihilated and and really just like is badass and just saves them all. Um, but then over the course of the next few comics, we actually see that she's like a husk of herself. Like she still yeah, can walk around. Yeah, she's weak and disfigured. Yeah, yeah. And she eventually gets back to being healed, but it takes like four or five issues, which I thought was cool. And, you know, I love that uh, during that moment, Drax is so supportive the whole time. Mm -hmm. And this this is a very interesting Drax, too, because he, I know they changed him later to fit the comic book or like fit the movies. But mm -hmm. at this point, you have a very intelligent Drax. Mm -hmm. he still loves fighting he's still dealing with like being someone created to destroy thanos and thanos is dead how's he deal with that finding his daughter again mm -hmm. you know all of that but it's a very different drax than almost like the, the comedic one we have now which i do prefer comedic drax personally but this is still a very interesting drax yeah i again i go back to the games i like the game version the best like i actually would say i will love i love drax in the movies too but in the game he he's he's little less literal and he's kind of like that middle ground where he does have a lot of dramatic uh weight to him but can be comedic and i think that's my favorite middle ground mm -hmm. whereas here he pl comes across a bit more like um like Worf, if I'm if I may make yeah, my Star Trek connections, mm -hmm. kind of a bit like Worf, where he's like a uh, big, strong dude, definitely smart, maybe a little bit limited in his thinking in terms of like yeah. being able to like think outside, like not think outside the box, like a little bit in, like tunnel vision is probably the like best a combination way of Worf and like Kratos from God of War. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like ragey and yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little it's, more serious. Mm -hmm. I do like, though, in his story that he he's actually the one to th uh, think of how to figure out where the scrolls are. Like, he's actually the one smart enough to, like, so, actually do that, which is really so a cool idea. And, and Mantis says this at the beginning of the book, right? Because she's like, hey, I see your future. I can't tell, I can't tell you everything. I do know mm -hmm. that they're going to choose the name Gardens of the Galaxy in about three hours. <laughs> that was great. But I can't get, I can't tell them that yet. And I also know that eventually one of them is going to betray them and kill them all or yeah. kill them. And it's just Drax <laughs> who's I, like, well, I'll temporarily make them brain dead. So then we can see who the scrolls are, mm -hmm. but they'll come back to life. So it's fine. That is, yeah, this is, this is okay. We'll just knock everyone out on, we'll just kill literally everyone on nowhere. <laughs> And they'll be fine. I'm sure that didn't hurt anybody. No. Yeah. Also, guys, Cosmo. There's the fact that we haven't had a lot of Cosmo in the movies is a disservice. It really is. Because Cosmo's the funniest character. He is best dog. Best dog. <laughs> I'm thinking the way he ends up like the G's with K's. Oh my god. Yeah. I, again, um, I this was another uh, like. I loved Cosmo when I met him in the game and then in the comic, I was so happy because he is, he is best dog. And I just like the way that he did like the Russian accent in, in the game was wonderful. Oh. I am best the friend Peter Quill. Like it is great. Like what I understand. Maybe that's not a big sell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm sure it's a Russian like, puppy mm, security officer. How could exactly. that not be the best thing? He wears a little space outfit. It's I would adorable. watch a whole show on nowhere. Have it be like deep space nine, right? Just have oh it be God, only yes. on nowhere. 
and you have like Cosmo and some other shenanigans happening where he's just trying to like run the yeah, station. Run the station's like, oh god, I gotta deal with this crap today. Yeah. Please. Oh my god. Oh my god, yeah. Come on, no, Disney Co- Marvel. Get me on that. Listen. <laughs> give give him one of those Disney Plus shows. I want yeah. it and I need it. I James Gunn. Let's call like James Gunn's out here making his Peacemaker show, which by the way I love and it's fantastic. But like he's out here making that. You go and go and get us the Cosmo show, James Gunn. I demand it. Uh, the rivalry between Co- Rocket and Cosmo is pretty great too. That's always mm. fun. Mm. I love their weird, yeah, friendships slash rivalry, just being animals. Yeah, both being like Earth-based animals, sort of stuff, which is kind of fun. Uh, Cosmo and narration would be cool. Absolutely, mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. a great thing. Just give me D Space Nine, but nowhere. Thank you. <laughs> Please and thank you. Thank you. Thank just you. like just ha- then you have like oh gosh because that would actually work because then you have like the um so you have Cosmo being like kind of the Odo yeah. and then you also have the um the uh, collector being kind of like the Quark character. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then That'd you have all fun. these people coming in and out. You can connect it with stuff you don't have to. It can be animated. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a fun sort of what if scenario. Yeah, I'm here for it. I am so here for it. They so. should let me write this stuff. Come on. Mm-hmm. Secretly, I just want more Deep Space Nine because that's my favorite. I mean, I've been I've been doing a rewatch with it with a friend of mine because she's watching it for the first time. And it's like, yeah. oh, this is the this is clearly the best Star Trek show. Like, I love all of Star Trek. This oh, is yeah. the best one. Yeah, it's not even not even a question. Core reference drink. <laughs> I mean, drink every time Jesse like met, connects something to Star Trek. I think if you're gonna do that, you'll probably be dead by the end of any stream. Well, that's the other good thing because I can be like, here we go, Star Trek references. <laughs> Everyone's like, I always love uh, talking to my friends on PlayStation Network. They're like, I'm friending you, but why is your picture of uh, a black man who's clearly not you? <laughs> and I'm like, because it's the captain, he's space sign. Thank you. <laughs> mm, gotta love Cisco. So important. Which, uh, remind me, I can't say it on stream. But okay. Remind me when we're off stream. Sorry, audience. Love you all. But remind me off stream. I have to tell you something about, okay. about Cisco. So we'll say yes. something. Love it. Um, okay, something else we talked about, Adam Warlock, mm-hmm. which I was not expecting for this book to kind of go in the direction that the game went. Sorry, I mentioned the game again. I'm going to get comments like I did with Invincible, where I'm like, okay, Invincible the comic, but Invincible the show <laughs> the whole time. Well, it's interesting, because I, I just this is a side too, but I think that that's part of our perspective, right? Like, where yeah. we're coming into like this, we're going to have that. Like, there are plenty of people that are like, whoa, you need to read it. Like, we're going to be comparing it because that's our, where our background is. Like I did yeah. the same thing with um, wheel of time. I was watching the wheel of time TV show mm-hmm. and I had never seen, read the book. And there were people like, yeah, well, you can't, either. yeah, you could, you can't talk about it. For another but it's like, no, no, no. This is my, if you don't want my perspective, that's fine, but I can only give you my perspective. I'm not going to like try to fake a perspective. I don't have. So our perspective yeah. is going to be like, we watched the movies, then we played the game and now we're in the comic. And like, that's the way we're going to do the comparison. Where if you'd like read it the that. other way, other people have that. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Adam Warlock. <laughs> I was I was pleased that you know having played the game, there were some things I could recognize of where we were going. So I think it made it fun when the things changed because I already kind of knew his deal. Mm-hmm. Because even though I read Annihilation, um, I did not really know a lot about Adam Warlock. Still, it's like a oh, big golden god guy. My, literally the. Playing, meeting him in the game was the first time I had ever encountered him. And he's great. Yeah. I was just like, I had no idea who this dude was. And I'm like, sure, I'm sure he's important. <laughs> and I don't know how... The casting is very interesting for that. So I'm very curious mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. that's going to be in Guardians 3. Because we mm-hmm. know he's there. Yeah. Who's, um, who's playing him in, in that? Oh, I always forget his name. But he was look. in... Is it called Bandersnatch? Is that a oh, Black that? Mirror... Oh God! Yes. Oh, that it's is that such guy, a weird... which is an interesting yeah. choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's normally he's, he's not Adam Warlock's this like Adonis type. Yeah, he is not the one that I would have. I would have oh. immediate. I'm sure he's gonna get like like MCU buff, like they did with uh with uh uh, uh Camille Nanjiani. Camille Nanjiani. I'm sure he's gonna get it. Um, yeah, I, he's like, he's one of those actors that like. I know he's been from stuff. Bandersnatch would be the what I immediately think, but like he's been yeah. like in a bunch of things. We don't like immediately think of him. Like I think Maze Runner, a lot of like YA stuff. I think. Yeah, sorry, Will Poulter. Sorry, I gotta look this up. I'm sorry. Go this for it. I'm, I, I apologize now. It, there we go. Hey, no, yeah. Oh, he already had his MCU glow up. Did he? Oh, to wow. Check that out. I want to get on that training regiment, right? Like, just to get I, me I don't that. No. 
Uh huh. I want to be buff like Lady Hellbender, which also okay. I am here. Ever for that. since that game, every time I have a show, I'm like, "Why did you guys not tell me about Lady Hellbender?" Oh my god! Readers? I almost I played it on stream. I almost died. I almost died. I'm like, whoo, whoo! And the way she like hits on Drax in that game, oh I'm my like, God. <laughs> I'll be fine. It's okay. No big deal. Like, where has she been? That is my time. <laughs> like, to a team. Like, I want to oh be with you and I don't want to cosplay you. She's everything. Also, Maze Runner. That's where I know Will yeah. pulled it from. Maze Runner was the was the movies. I actually weirdly liked those movies. So, anyways, that's that's Yeah, it'll be very there. interesting to see how he does that. Yeah. Role. He's also a little bit younger too than I would have initially yeah. thought for Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock seems like dude, like Adonis in his forties, not in like. I, his that's 20s how 30s. I feel too. Yeah. So I'm very surprised, but then again, I've always been surprised with like DC Marvel casting about things. So mm -hmm. the way I, that generally, I expect things, I'm, you know. Yeah, and of all the directors that I trust to cast well, I trust James Gunn. Like James oh, yeah. Gunn is 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 really solid at casting people. So absolutely. Um, and I, I really liked Adam Warlock in this. I, I was sad that he didn't rhyme as much because I kind of liked how verbose he is. Yes, I love that in the game where he just constantly was rhyming every single thing. <laughs> and then all the characters just getting kind of like like tired of it and just like making fun of him the entire time for rhyming. He's like, oh God, please stop. <laughs> Uh, we have a super chat. Hi, Sky. Happy Blade of Valentine's Day. And congrats on the upcoming nuptials. Uh, thinking, thank you so much. And thank you for the Batman book. I just got it. Uh, I don't have a good way to like, message you to tell you thank you when you send me things. So thank you. I, I, I always hate that, too. Like uh, People send me stuff um, like like because I have a P.O. box or like stuff like yeah. that. And people send me stuff. I'm like, oh, this is super sweet. I, do, I, I can only like say it on a live stream and hope you hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make my haul videos up, but that's not as special. Like, I want to make something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. personal. Yeah. But thank you again, Scotty J. <laughs> um, I'm having a wedding next month. I got like. Hell yeah, congrats. Getting, tying the knot. Before I've been married for two years because <laughs> of the pandemic. It's that's fine. just how it's how it goes. You're not the only person I've I had. I did had ask the string quartet to play uh, Kiss My Rose by Seal. So perfect third time this week that that has come up wait kiss for real <laughs> number one kiss from a rose is my go-to I, I have two songs that are my go-to karaoke songs okay one... listen real quick before i interrupt i'm sorry to interrupt you but <laughs> no, my no. friend and i yesterday literally both talked about how kiss from a rose is our karaoke song it is my it is my number one karaoke song followed by the number two i'll make a man out of you from milan oh. because just the number one it's a great song and number two the irony of a trans woman Absolutely. belting that out at a bar is the best. Uh, <laughs> it's my favorite thing. I once stood up, I might have been at someone's birthday party and got drunk and stood on a table singing that song. Anywho, oh, that man, is a story I, for a different I want to see drunk Jesse Gender live in person. Damn, with the pandemic. Don't. Yes, I You'd do. probably do. <laughs> I'm upset about this pandemic. Because I feel like we could have already hung out in real life. <laughs> um, but the any yes, that will happen. We will make that happen at some point. Also, too, the second reason Kiss from Rose came up was um, uh, I was recording my Sex and Star Trek video earlier this week, and then my downstairs neighbor. Because whenever I film something, of course, my downstairs neighbor has to play loud music, which is fine. They're allowed to do that. It was just like, damn it. Um, yeah. And it was Kiss from Rose. So I'm like in the middle of my in my filming i'm just like ba -da -da, ba -da. i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> i'll probably put him up there but it, yeah so that's the third time that that is like come up so jessica's right i am a huge batman forever <laughs> mm -hmm. fun movie fun movie one of those like like ridiculously fun so. schumacher batman flicks reference drink i lee i really yeah i agree with jessica the more you add these weird random drinking rules i really appreciate <laughs> <laughs> more drinking, we'll drinking games game. for the chat <laughs> i'm here for it i'm here for it oh man i had something to we bring so, up yeah we were talking about adam warlock i i will agree i i again i did like him here um but again he he's his characterization isn't as strong and it's it, as like you get later on and it's it's interesting like now that we're talking this all out with yeah. this comic it's it, knowing that this is like the first iteration of this version of the guardians of the galaxy. It's interesting to see like how much was both like settled here, like the mm -hmm. sort of like team structure, but also how much it's evolved more over time, not just because they've been MCU ified, which I'm sure is yeah. part of it, which is like the, the movie version crystallizes them into public consciousness and then gets transferred to the comics, which happens often. Um, but 
also like how much the idiosyncrasies of these characters start to get developed um, more and more and get evolved more and more over time, which is just, I mean, that's part of the joy of comics. You get to like see different versions of characters yeah. go through like their history. Cause the version of Batman we got in the 1960s, very different from today. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I am curious. If, I know people have read, you know, uh, more Adam Warlock before this. I'm curious to see how he was then compared to now, mm-hmm. and how that's grown. Because um, I know right now, as far as like the more modern take of Adam Warlock, I'm a huge fan of this Adam Warlock as he is right now. I I think he's interesting. I could I could take him or leave him as far as like a, a group casting. I know that he's very important because of the way that he progresses into Adam Magus mm-hmm. later evil adam magus i could give you um, dcu lore marvel lore I'm, i have no idea so yeah mine is very limited but it, it's all in cosmic this is the only place i have it if there's any if there's like a team avengers book i be lost what, me. what's happening yeah it's got to be just one character at a time but if you're like let's talk about this avengers event no i don't have it for you mm-hmm. i don't have it I, yeah, yeah dc i'm like okay let's talk about <laughs> Yeah, I could give you the entire history of like the big moments in DC. Marvel, I'm like, I, I've like I've read Civil War, and like a couple of random things here and there, but overall, I've. That's probably more than me. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's some characters I want to like Miles Morales. I want to, I do want to do a deep dive on him because I love him. Yeah. But. Yeah, my goal for this year is Deadpool because I haven't read any. Mm, mm, so I'm trying to Deadpool. And I, and I've told fans here, but Punisher because I want to school. Uh, the, shitty the, people in my town. <laughs> yeah, the toxic people are like the yeah. Punisher's great, and I'm like, oh god, you don't really. I want to be that. like, have you been read <laughs> the mm-hmm, comic mm-hmm, books? Mm-hmm. That's my goal. But um, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Uh, my ADHD. Eventually, I'm just like, I don't know where I was going. Um, but something I do want to talk about is they do reference the original Guardians of the Galaxy because basically yeah. they get their like the name and the idea after meeting um already forgot his name i know it's not patriot it is something american <laughs> oh uh the guy from the future uh yeah. right oh, god i forget his name too someone the chat will tell us he's yeah. a big blue guy who's big not... blue guy with captain america shield yeah and yondu's right. there uh yes yeah. i know that's where they got him from mm-hmm. um but that was neat because like i don't have any understanding of any, of, any that. of that <laughs> i did i did like that story um with uh with the like future version of him um yeah. i thought that was like because there's this like ongoing storyline that doesn't get revolved in the volume that we were listening to um peacemaker um that is there's like this guy comes from the future and then a, another hero from the future comes back and is trying to like fix the future because stuff's going oh, on in the present Starhawk. star hawk but it's confusing i because there's another something hawk who also yeah. hangs out with Guardians, like Dark, Dark Hawk or something. Anyways, continue. Yeah, anyways, there's like Starhawk, but Starhawk is like changing genders and like changing stuff because... <laughs> I because... was reading that, I was like, I wonder if Jessica's... <laughs> like, Yo, no, no, it, it, it was interesting because it's like they... It's not because like they choose to change genders, it's because the yeah. time's shifting. So there's not really much to say about it from like a, like a trans perspective, which oh, is yeah. what I would have. It was just more like, yeah, it's time stuff's going on. So <laughs> gender yeah, swaps. Yeah, wimey stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be young or old or man or woman or neither. It just depends on mm-hmm. the... Or a monkey, because later on you see these different... Ver- well, later on in the comic, there's like different versions of them, mm-hmm. apparently. Yeah. So I did like the reference to neither or both in terms of like man, woman, neither, both. Like it was like, oh, that's nice to like see that reference, but still. So major victory. Major that's what it was. Major victory. Yeah. Thank you. The part works comics reader. And he kind of just hung out. And I like that they just stole the name from them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that like, sounds good. Rocket's like, I really like that. I'm gonna keep pushing that. You know, mm-hmm. I really think that would be a good idea. And they just like, yeah, we're guardians of the galaxy. Like you just took that name from this group just stole it yeah it's like they stole it from us technically because we're from the future they're from the future so yeah it feels appropriate and what's weird about it is that name in in the game and in the in the movie it like it just feels like a peter quill like over over emphasized like we're the guardians of the galaxy like we're so cool we're actually here it's like 
well, yeah, that's kind of the job description. Like they are like their whole, the whole point of the job is like, we need to bring together a team to st- like fight the fights that other people yeah. get sort of like thing, which is very like, again, cosmic Avengers. Um, and so it's like, they actually, they actually, that doesn't feel over aggrandizing at all to say that gardens of galaxy. It's actually what they're supposed to be as opposed to later on, which meant more as like a, a joke sort of name. Yeah. Like the whole purpose versus like, cause yeah, it's, it's so different this one because he did this on purpose. Mm-hmm. He worked with Mantis. He's like, these are the people I want to be together. Let's make this happen. We need a, a force out here in yeah. the galaxy to protect people. And this is someone apparently who had a very low understanding of America and superhero teams, which I think is very funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, unlike the movies and even like maybe the game, I don't really know how they really described it, but it's more like he kind of picked up people along the way. Yeah, the game just sort of starts in the middle of it and you're just sort of like yeah. made to pick up from context clues how they all met, which I don't think they gave a definitive answer on, but. Um, Dark Hawk, that's what I was thinking of. Thanks, Night yeah. Hawk. Why are there so many hawks? What's the deal? Yeah, and then there's like, <laughs> what is it? There's uh, in DC, there's the two hawk girl and hawk man. And, um, yeah, like, and hawk man, I don't know if you ever like, just like look at looked at him on a whim. Mm-hmm. But man, oh, that's oh, some no. confusing shit. Oh no, <laughs> believe me, I know, believe me, I know. Also, <laughs> like, I mean, I hawk, just, hawk just, girl herself is, is no slouch either in the beat you with a mace department. In, well, she's in... great. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we need to read more DC comics together so we can talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. um man where's my train of thought well what else i'm I'm trying to also think about some of the plot stuff because we've been talking mostly about like characters um we do get this storyline because it relates to the game might as well compare them to um the the church the Mm -hmm. i forget the intergalactic church um which i kind of found interesting here again they they kind of seem more like an accepted part of the galaxy whereas in the um in the game they're just sort of like this creepy organization that kind of crops up out of nowhere and no one's really thinking about and yeah. then sort of becomes a big deal like a huge deal at the end uh but in in this they seem to be like just kind of like the catholic church and just like very yeah. ov- like a very overtly a commentary on the catholic church where they're just like yep they got people like just giving them money and they're just they're brainwashing people all the time and like using people's faith in order to literally power themselves like it's a Which, very it's such a cool concept still i love that they were like i believe i can beat you and then they just do i just yeah it's so I... fun I like it. It's it's such a clever like concept that is so clearly a like a meant to take the piss of organized religion, like of like the Catholic Church, like and popes and all that stuff. And so it's like it's such a cool and clever concept that I thought was really cool to see here. Well, I love how inevitably Adam Warlock's like, well, I can't beat them. I'll just lead them. Mm-hmm. So like that's a one. That's a way to go. That's a way to go. <laughs> I mean, if you're that into yourself, sure. Universal Church of Truth. Yeah, I kept wanting mm-hmm. to call them Universal Life Church, which is not the same thing. <laughs> um, uh, the Universal Church of Truth is a cool old story from Starlin. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> what's this Christmas with the Vatican? We're pulling out all the Lee's greatest hits. <laughs> yep, yep. I love it. As someone who's culturally Catholic. <laughs> I mean, hey, I grew up I grew up Roman Catholic too, believe me. I, I know the deal. And now we're on the internet talking about comic books, so mm-hmm. I don't grandma- know what that says. <laughs> my grandmother liked to constantly remind me, you were you were baptized Roman Catholic. And I'm like, cool, glad I had a choice in that matter. But she's as if like as if like because I was baptized Roman Catholic means that like I have to like always go along with it. It's just like again, this is not to anyone insult anyone's religious beliefs. I just have major problems, especially with organized religion. So yeah. Basic cosmic version of the Webs <laughs> West Pro Baptist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! Oh, Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, uh, this is this is this is an aside. But did I ever did I ever tell you I met the the daughter of the guy who formed the Westboro Baptist Church? No. This is before I was out, but um, it, it was really awful. Uh, my my college went to a convention, like a journalism convention, mm-hmm. and it was just right after they had won. Like she had just won some like big Supreme Court case, so they invited her to talk. And like everyone just kept insulting her and 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 it was like kind of frustrating because like we were all college students and like they were asking like really kind of dumb questions and i'm like come on people you can do as better questions of this horrific terrible human being and actually make her question herself as opposed to like just attacking her and just like insulting her i'm like come on we can be better than just like like don't get me wrong she deserves to be insulted like she does but like in this context like 
like make her actually question herself instead of being like, you're stupid. And I'm like, come on, come on. We can be better than that. Well, I think like, you and I are still more in that way with talking to people of different opinions of things. It's just, there's a better way to go about it. Mm -hmm. That well, one like, is safer for us. Uh, yeah. And two, I think actually has made it some difference sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was just like the sense of like, I think what it was for me for that sort of thing. So this is a complete side, but like with her, it's like, she was so self-assured and full of herself. It was like so clear that like we were the idiots in the room to her. Um, and so like what frustrated me was like, that was the vibe that I was getting. And I kind of want, and like, again, don't get me wrong. Westboro Baptist church, they should be told that they're stupid and awful and terrible. Like, don't get me wrong. Like they should be, they should hear that. But it was just like this whole bit, like where she had this like pomposity to her. And then everyone was just sort of like proving her right in that situation by just being like, like lowbrow insults. And I'm like, like actually question her and be like, uh, what doesn't the Bible actually say that you should accept all people and like differences and like actually talk about that. And then, and then make her like actually have to answer for her toxic, horrible bigotry. But so, yeah. Anyways, that's an aside, but yeah, Westboro, I, 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 it was just one of the most like frustrating experiences as a kid. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So at this point we can go ahead and rate and then just chill with the chat if you want. Cause I think we've talked yeah. pretty at length as, as much as we can mm -hmm. about yeah. this. Oh, this one was a hard one to rate. Yeah. Me. Cause it kind of bounces around. Yeah. It's hard if you don't have all the knowledge around it. But it's also hard to rate it based on that because it's not Dan Abbott's fault. He had to uh to appease so many masters. Yeah. But it I will say we like you you mentioned like, oh, there's like all this other stuff and it's hard to follow. I will say, like, it is confusing in the comic booky way of like sometimes there's a lot going on and you're like, what's happening here? But it was actually fairly accessible. It's someone who like only vaguely know stuff from like the games and movies yeah. and stuff about Marvel for the most part, especially in the cosmic realm, which I don't have much of a hook into. Um, I I actually found it fairly straightforward in terms of like getting the main story and getting the vibe of everything. I do think there's like, we, we taught you touched upon it, but like the like documentary type feel mm -hmm. to it um, was also clever. So like, I, I actually think it was like a really solid run, despite the fact that there was like, all these different masters that it was serving. I actually think it told like a really solid story with really strong characters and like really got you hooked into like this version of the galaxy. And while it's clearly not the version that I think gets molded into being the more iconic versions that they would eventually become, um, you definitely see crumbs of it in, throughout this. And it's, it's a strong start for like this type of team. Oh yeah, absolutely. I will say out of a rating of 10, I'm leaning towards a seven because I did genuinely enjoy it. I enjoyed mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy what it is and I enjoy where it was going, uh, especially, and it's probably still related to something, uh, you know, what else I've read and seen. Mm -hmm. um, but I still am very happy with this character, so I'm very thankful to have read where they kind of came from. Um, I think the, the only downside, like I said before, uh, with if it happens with any comic book thing, is that some stories, if you don't have knowledge of other things, can make it a little bit difficult or confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, I'm still very happy with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Run. I think I'm right there with you. I'm. I think seven out of ten feels like a good, perfect sort of example. Like I think the times that it does have to serve the other masters, like especially the like War of the Kings thing, I was like, I was completely like, I don't okay, really so care man about this. And humans. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, I don't really care what's happening here. Let's just get through this. But that being said, the actual like, especially the first like eight issues or so of this were actually really solid the secret invasion stuff while it was tying into secret invasion like still told a really cool story that fit this the storyline going on and i loved all the characters running. so i think seven out of ten is is really where i would land on it except for all the stuff with cosmo which 10 out of 10 10 out of 10, 10. 10. anytime yeah. cosmo shows up absolutely mm -hmm. anytime best, best dog he is the best dog i am best friend best i am best of friends peter quill I love him so much. He's wonderful. I legit want more of him. Just so oh, much. put him in the dance. I know he's in the movie technically a little bit, but like, come on, mm -hmm. telepathic Russian dog. They give, they give. In what if they give Howard the Duck more than Cosmo? And I'm like, that How is a crime. Dare they? That is a crime. An absolute crime. So rude. Mm -hmm. I really, I really want to like just call up James Gunn now and be like, 
put yo put Cosmo like in Please front and center. Yes. Yeah. I want to be like I know you want to. Yeah, you know. Do you, you really have... really really do you, do you really want do you really want Cosmo? I was trying to make a peacemaker reference, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> I still haven't watched it. But I'm going to because you like it. I love it because and I'm actually I, filming... I love the Suicide Squad, but I wasn't a big fan of him. And so I was like, why are they making this show? And then I saw you post it. I was like, damn it, Jesse. <laughs> I legit okay, sorry. I'm legitimately if I if if my time allows me to, I'm hoping uh, I'm not if you're free, we can just keep talking. I don't care. Oh no, 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 no. I mean I'm 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 just saying like um I'm I'm hoping my plan was yesterday, but I got dragged into like I had a lot of other work to do. Yeah. So I'm hoping to be able to write uh this week a video about Peacemaker because yeah. of how much I loved it. It is it is such a great show that like breaks down like masculinity but also is it's a show about like peacemaker is this character who uh, at least in in the way john cena plays him who has this like very libertarian kind of like very bleh view of the world and very like america's except american exceptionalist yeah. but then the movie itself like kind of breaks that down as it coming from a place of like him trying to have this like uphold this like view of masculinity that he's trying to constantly live up to and his dad is literally a white like literally a white supremacist leader like not even like they make no bones about it like they wear full like he's a straight up white supremacist leader um and it's like dealing with him trying to like he's actually a better person than his dad and he knows yeah. it but he's still like dealing with all the shit that his dad instilled in him and so it's like kind of breaks that down and it's like it's a show about like not it's about trying to talk about accepting people and meeting people where they are at and like like actually just seeing humanity in other people as opposed to like just always constantly relating ourselves to ourselves politically and these like yeah. grander identities but like actually connecting you to yourselves and breaking down those toxic viewpoints in a way that i think james gunn sorry i'm ranting about this because i love it so no much, i love this this is such a good sell right now it just works so well because like james gunn fits that as a person as someone who like you look into his history of oh, yeah. like the fact that he was like he came from a school that was very abusive um like his one of his teachers was abusing children um not him according to what he's interviewed about but like abusing children he also has dealt with like these political fights um they like the whole thing with like him being fired from disney like he's been he's been reduced to um like just being seen as his political identity instead of actually yeah. engaging with him on these issues but he's also been very toxic as well like his whole history like from like tromeo and juliet and like super and all that so like it's very toxic stuff so he's this guy who definitely like gets all these things i think he just really took it and distilled it into peacemaker in this really wonderful way that just is all about all this like how toxic masculinity relates to these like ideas yeah. of american exceptionalism and white supremacy but then how we can really if the way to move forward is to recognize each other's humanity and not necessarily see it in these hyperbolicized terms of politics and it's just so good and i absolutely loved it oh. and i and i cannot tell you how much i love uh peacemaker show also the best opening credits of any tv show i have ever. heard about that everyone's mm -hmm. like the opening though mm -hmm. man that, oh god you're so good at selling <laughs> it's you could sell it's anything good. to me i'd be like okay yeah <laughs> jesse likes this okay yeah i'll be there please watch it. it is it is it is it is legitimately i mean i, I haven't like sat down and like looked at a list yeah. It is easily my favorite comic book TV show. Like, oh even wow, at all, that's even, that's big. Yeah, live that's action. Big. I should say the animated stuff. You could probably is usually better. Yeah. But but in terms of live action comic book stuff, including all the Disney Plus stuff, I think this is Peacemaker is the best one. Um, and it's definitely up there. I'd have to like look at a list, but it's definitely yeah. up there as one of my favorite comic book live action things made in the past like five ten years. So well, I'm sold. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it as soon as I'm done playing uh, Horizon Forbidden West constantly. I mean, I mean, I got it. Ooh, I got it. Ooh. It's right here. <laughs> She's my girl. I every time I look at this, my my room's not bright enough, but like. Oh my god! Yes, love it. Oh my god. She's Wonderful. my. I have a whole. I have a whole ass cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, love it. Oh my god! I I also like. Uh, the, the the whole thing with Horizon lately has like been so f like it just so exposes like this the toxic like boy culture in gaming about like why does Pamela look like a look like she's made made mask and I'm like that's just how girls look. Oh, gosh, girls just that look like that. They were like, does she have a beard? And I was like, did you know women have hair on their faces? Yeah, like oh my god, you know? Yes, that's the whole thing. Have you have you like looked at an actual woman and like, like it's just um. Like, 
how dare you insult my wife? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a list of wives, but like Aloy's like really up there, right with right with Diana. She's she's there. It's just this whole thing, like with gaming. It's just like this whole thing where, like, because gaming is now not just being made for the toxic gamer culture and yeah. also like it's like allowing more people into the creation of it and it's also not just like catering to this like hyper sexualized like let's just put triangles on yeah. uh on uh on tomb raider and it'll be boobies and that like well, I, like girl what... aloy doesn't even like date anybody yeah like she's not even and i i love to romance <laughs> i mean i know you understand as a fellow mass Effect player but I appreciate that even she's just like, nah, I don't, I'm busy. I'm trying to save the damn date. world. What are you talking about? Yeah. And I will say, like, though, the cute. <laughs> I will say, though, the boy, at, I just have played the opening level of Horizon Forbidden West. Ooh, and I will Carl. say, the, yeah, I'm like, okay, he could get it, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man, please update me the whole time you keep playing because I want to know everything you think about it. I will, yeah. I I played the first part of it on stream, but um, but I haven't got much further, and I probably won't for like another week or so, just because I'm finishing off. Um, I'm in the middle of Dark Souls two because I played. I did a whole video about me playing Dark Souls one. Fell in love with Dark Souls well, one. Love Dark Souls one. It's so good. Uh, if you have, if I may, if I may pimp my wares a little uh, bit. You can but, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I did a video where I played Dark Souls 1 for the first time. And it's honestly one of my favorite videos I've ever done in my life. I'm very proud of that video so much. Um, it's over on GameSpot. I did it for GameSpot. So please go watch that video if you have not seen it. Um, uh, but uh, I love that video. And so I just like, all right, screw it. I, I stayed away from the Soulsborne games for so long mm -hmm. because I was kind of scared of them. But now I oh, adore sorry. them. So I'm in the middle of Dark Souls 2, which I understand why it's the most... Con I still enjoy it. I understand why it's the controversial one. Um, but I want to finish that. And then probably by that point, Elden Ring will be out. So I'll have to play that and then I'll get back to Horizon. So it's kind of like, I'm going to be jumping around. Don't worry, I will play Horizon. We will talk about it. But it's like, there's just a list of games. And Dying Light, I need oh. to toss in there at some point too. The new Dying Light game. There's just, there's too many. There's just too many. Oh, I, absolutely. And I've got stuff like I never wanted to really stream, but I'm like, oh, man, there's a couple things I want to. Because mm -hmm. I fell into Five Nights at Freddy's and I'm like an adult. And I don't uh, know how it happened. I want to like I always feel like I would the enjoy Five was Nights. was really good. And that's what gets me. I was like, damn it. I would do want to play Five Nights at Freddy's. I can't do it on stream just because I, I made an active choice. I don't know. And this is no judgment. But like no. Five Nights at Freddy's is like uh, I, I made an active judgment that I try not to play games made by really shitty people on, oh, uh, shit, on stream. I didn't know they were. The guy who so the guy who he recently had a controversy where uh, the guy who created those games and he's like the sole creator of all of them was giving a lot of money to very anti LGBTQ Republicans. Yeah. Um, and then after that fact, he was like, screw it. I made enough money, sold the games to a different yeah. people. And now someone else is making it. So yeah, it's like, Ugh. so it's just one of those, like, I, this is by no, like we can, I've, as I've spoken about before, like, yeah, you, it's totally okay to appreciate art made by, you know, horrible people or like people who have like done some bad things, but I, but, and I, and I still do the same myself. I just try not to play them on streams. So that's I think that's smart. Well, we have the conversation all the time with people where I'm like, you know, everyone can interact about things they want, but if, it, if there's anything that like, if you're doing extra promotion for somebody who doesn't need it or mm -hmm. for me personally, or if I don't have to monetarily help them in any way, I will not do that. Mm -hmm. And it's... that sucks because there's some comic books I really love. Right. But I, I have to always do the premise, the, the preface. I'm like, okay, listen, I love this book. Buy it used. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? it's, the same, it's the same thing with like Buffy and Firefly. Like I love oh, those that's shows. That's hard because yeah. I'm a collector. Mm -hmm. And that's always a hard conversation because you'd be like, okay, how much is this person involved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And luckily it's, it's not good anymore, but still <laughs> it doesn't make it easier. Exactly. It's like, uh, just, but it's also like you also want to, especially with certain products, you're like, when it's just like a soul creator where it's like one person wrote this, like with the Harry Potter books, like JK Rowling is awful. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, you know what? It's very easy to me to be like, screw the books. I won't read them or promote them or whatever. Um, but the, um, the, when you get to something like Buffy or, uh, or like Firefly or whatever, and Joss Whedon being a terrible person, but it's also like, but the people that he hurt also worked on the show and also gave their hardest yeah. on those things. So it's like, 
how do you balance that sort of like thing of like wanting to promote these those people and so it's like it's a constant push and pull of like oh, yeah. that constant battle and I, and I don't think there's ever a hard it's line a case by case yeah exactly I always explain like some people like if someone's like really really benefiting mm -hmm. then it's a different case then it's a different scenario than like a group thing mm -hmm. like I'm not stoked about the flash because I'm not as your Miller fan. Mm, well, yeah. But I know that a lot of people are involved in that, so I can't really fault it. But, I mean, I do hate. <laughs> well, it's also like we don't talk. That's another thing too. Like, I don't want to spoil things, but like Ezra Miller still gets around. I don't want to spoil something for somebody that I know you haven't seen yet. Um, but it's just like, why are we still on the Ezra Miller train? Like, why have we not talked about the fact that he like choked a lady publicly? Yeah. Like, what's Absolutely. up with that? It's kind of messed up, and like. N just never mentioned it. It's like, okay, I guess we're just going to let that go. wild to me. Uh, I feel you. I can't bring myself to read anything more in Ellis's name anymore. I can't mm -hmm. either. One of my all-time favorite writers, but they're just books. It's hard. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't monetize that person at all. <laughs> like, yeah. And even Warren Ellis is like done some horrible shitty shit, but he was also the one that even like, at least like took ownership of that. Right. That was him. So like, again, it's so like hard good. lines and kind of, yeah. Again, I don't want to, like, I don't want to forgive him. Like, it's not for me to yeah. forgive his horrible shitty stuff, but like, but it's like, again, it's just like complicated situations for like creators. Whereas like Joss Whedon's sitting here being like, everyone hates me. I'm like, yeah, maybe like he's just playing yeah, a pity do. party. Yeah. How dare you do this? Yeah. Charisma Carpenter and then give us an awful season of Angel. I'll never uh -huh. forget you. Uh -huh. Yeah. To be fair, I don't really love Angel uh, all that much. To That's be fair. fair. I, don't, I can't blame people. He was mm -hmm. my like middle school crush, so I had pictures of Dave Boron is all over my wall. I mean, I met him. I met him. I heard he's not great in person. He was fine. I had like he was a graduate of my college. He was actually my. Oh really? Um, he was my. Uh, he was my. The year he was the speaker at the um, at my at the graduation the year before I graduated. That's so, yeah. Wow, first to me. <laughs> yeah, so it's weird. So, but he um. And weirdly, he went to like film school, even though he's like an actor. So it was a whole thing. Yeah. But he, um, but because of that, I was working on the student six security. It was like my, I was the job that I had. Um, and so I got like a call at like six in the morning. Yeah. I, it's like I had done an overnight where like with a friend, we were like, you had to stay up till three in the morning watching stuff. And I went to bed and got a call at six and like, hey, uh, David Boreanaz needs like a security detail just to like help people like when he's signing stuff, to, like let people in or whatever. That's so cool. Yeah. And so I'm like, uh, I've had three you hours of sleep. Lost yeah i was like i have had three hours of sleep but i'll take it <laughs> and i'll do and i did so i'm like like half asleep like hanging out with david Boreanis. but my favorite thing is um one of my friends who worked on staff didn't really know or care about him like he'd never yeah. seen angel or any of that stuff and so he's like look um i've never seen you and i don't really know you and he like went up to him because he like hung out with us afterwards yeah. like he seen other people and she was just hanging out with us a few minutes afterwards and he was very he seemed very affable at the time yeah. Um, and so my friend's like, look, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. I've never seen any of your stuff, but my mom is actually a huge fan of yours. And I kind of want to tell her, would you take a picture of me, but you're not in it <laughs> 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 to send to my mom and said, this picture is taken by David Boreanaz. And he's like, okay, yes. But That's if, like, if I can take a picture of like you in like a, like, like a weird position. So my friend just like turned around and like, like he didn't like flash, but he just like yeah. shaved his butt at the camera. He just like his ass, like in still wearing jeans, like didn't flash or anything. That. But it just like, so my friend has a picture of, got a picture taken by David Boreanaz of his butt to send to his mother, which is just very funny. It was, it was at least nice of David Boreanaz to like be game for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I've always heard the best things about the actor who plays Spike. That's mm. always what I hear is like really wonderful things about. He seems he seems like a pretty chill dude. He seems like a really chill dude. I feel like of, of all of them, I would really want to meet uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. She likes oh, like a cool person to hang out with. She's got to be great. And plus, her husband's a total geek. Mm -hmm. Freddie Prince Jr. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he is, oh right, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Iron Bull. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that he is so ingratiated in geek culture and he's so cool. I just really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that because if you're a big actor, you don't have to do that. Yeah, but he's like, no, I'm, in, I'm in Star Wars. It's serious. That's why I love um, uh, what's his face? Um, oh my gosh, uh, Superman. Um, oh, 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 which one? Uh, recent one, Witcher. Um, 
Uh, oh, Henry Lane, Cavill. Henry Cavill. That's why I at least appreciate Henry Cavill because he's like because yeah, he plays I mean, Warhammer. Like, yeah, a nerd. <laughs> and like makes makes computers half naked and like so I was like I'm here for this. But I just love that he just like yeah I love the Witcher games. I want to play the Witcher and they're like um yeah we didn't think we could get you. He's like you yeah, know I'll be the Witcher. <laughs> he's like great. Oh, that's just true. I want that. See that's my dream. Is like I want to be powerful enough. I'll just be like hey I like this franchise. Can I like do something for it? And they're like yeah sure please. <laughs> Home. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm so happy with more celebrities coming out there like, yeah, no, I love playing D and D and I love doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. More of that. Uh, of course, then you get all these like funny, you know, D and D sponsored like celebrity games, which are pretty cool. Those are a lot of fun. I was I always enjoy those. Those the D and D is like I just watched uh the Vox Machina show. Um, which was a lot of fun i did really like it it's a lot of fun it was very nerdy i i what i appreciated most about it it's like not the best show in the world but you definitely get the vibe of like this having been originally like a like a actual game of dnd because you really get the sense of these characters like feeling like they're bouncing off each other and joking with each other and just fucking around it's a total love letter and i Mm -hmm. like i i'm one of those like on the I'm adjacent to the critical role, so I know things. Mm-hmm, but me my too. attention span is not adequate enough to physically to really watch it. Yeah, but I know things. I read the comic book, so I know things that happen, and I I loved it. My 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 issue is the other direction where it's like there's so much critical role, and I know because I am a completionist. Like because my, the way my neurodivergent yeah. brain works is like if I get involved in something, I get involved. Like I need to know yeah. everything about it. Um, so I'm like I have to stay away from critical role because if I do, I will I will be lost for months <laughs> just diving down that rabbit hole. Yeah, things I've recommended to people that are interested, but they're like, like me, and they can't quite focus enough to watch those. It's like Dimension 20 has been great for me. Mm-hmm. Since it's, it's edited. Um, it's They have some pictures in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you have it like it's all improv actors. And so oh, I really fun. appreciate that. And plus you have a more diverse cast as well. And mm-hmm. so that really held my attention. Plus like, you know, maybe eight episodes a season. Each episode is two hours at most okay that's much so better. that's great and immediately i'm like okay i can get into that i can get into the fandom easy and then like it, the adventure zone but that's because it's a podcast and again short edited comical it's yeah. a lot easier yeah. for me to as opposed to critical there. role is like however many god, god dang hours like each podcast yeah, is like four three hours four hours or... an episode yeah it's like geez and i just can't <laughs> yeah i really couldn't i really couldn't either I get why people love it. Like I, I get like the the especially in our day and age of like the like the desire to like you feel like you're hanging out with friends and that's oh, yeah. that definitely gives you that. But it's just like yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't. Ooh, someone mentioned Titans. One second, Titans United is what I wanted from the series. I assume you mean Titans. Titans is Which what I wanted from the series. I always want the Titan comics to be the actual. Mm-hmm, show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I need but more Titans. Okay. It's fine. Nobody wants me to have Roy Harper and Don Shore. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I love Roy Harper. He's great. Jesse, also, that's saw... that's how you get to a girl's heart, right? <laughs> oh my God! Oh Roy! Oh, he's Roy. my he's my main man. Have you, I may have you... a lot of wives, but I have only a few husbands, and they're either Bioshock or not Bioshock. Sorry, uh. Bioware related or they're mm. Roy Harper. I need show. to still play the more Bioware games. I've only really ever played the Mass Effect games. I need to play <gasps> Dragon Age. I know, I know you and like literally everybody wants to play Dragon Age. Well, and then uh once Knights of the Old Republic gets remade, you've got to play that if you mm-hmm. have it. Oh, I so I that's a lie. I did play Knights of the Republic a little bit up yeah. until so I, I owned the game way back on the original, it was the original Xbox, I believe, right? Yeah. And I owned it, but I bought a used copy. And that was back when I was like a kid. So like, you know, buying a game like was like all your allowance money for a few months. Yeah. Um, and so I bought the game and I played it and I got really into it. And then I got to like the part where you first arrive at the Jedi Council, which is like the mm-hmm. second planet in the game, disc broke. And like the disc, oh, the disc was scratched. And so it would not let me load past that point. And so I never played, I've never Kids played. Today, I don't past that. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. I've got some like old PlayStation games that I've like collected and I have to have two or three copies of them because they all scratch. And so I have to be able to like put in the other one. Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. It, like... <laughs> it's like, it's the, it's a real thing. And then you had like all those tricks and tips that people was like, you got to spread peanut butter on it. 
Like, did you ever do that? What? No. I did that. There was a few games that I actually no. did that for, like where there's people like you spread peanut butter on it and it's supposed to like fill the cracks. And then and then you could like swipe it off and you clean it off. Is that and real then life? Work. It works. What? It works. I forget not for this game, but for like okay. for like there was I forget what it was. It was some game when I was younger that my Xbox 360. Yeah. It was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? Something like yeah. that. Where like it kept scratching, and so I did the whole peanut butter trick, and it worked. The game worked fine after I did peanut put peanut butter on the oh, background yeah. and put it. It's like please weird... no, but I want to try, but please no one let me try. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like that old thing with like putting a phone in rice sort of nonsense, but I'm sure it's just like right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Maybe, real. I don't think that's real, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I do um, think you would love Dragon, at least the third one. I, I, okay. Everything that I've seen from it. <clears throat> looks like i would enjoy the story i the gameplay i was a little bit put off by because i just don't like like the turn-based feel of it i like more real-timey stuff yeah. um it was also something that turned me off from nice the republic's gameplay too um, yeah that's the bummer because those dragon's origins is just like kotor yeah that being said like i can power through character. i can power through stuff like that if the story's strong enough and it feels it's like very, the Dragon Age games very are very good yeah so i just want to hear romance that's all i care about yeah that's really yep. good i want to be like i want to just peek in and be like okay so was... <laughs> i will say the female romance options of three are not good oh i've heard that too i've heard that it's too not good it's a bummer also someone said jesse are you enjoying prodigy meow Nian? i did enjoy prodigy star trek prodigy for those i just saw that and i like wanted to to call out so i did really enjoy that show it was good um i guess we can take a couple more questions and then yeah. that way i can hear what jesse wants to talk about I'm yeah sure. I, I i i someone said they want me to drop the system pack. i literally i i let me put it this way i legally cannot i will tell you after afterwards maddie but i legally cannot <laughs> on screen, okay. so. um but yeah um well i guess while we wait for questions mm -hmm. uh what else have you been into lately outside of uh working on videos working on videos so peacemaker i really loved what have yeah. i been watching because i've been like watching a bunch of shows. oh um if you want some um it's like good sci-fi. Uh, Raised by Wolves. If you oh, man. That. Lee's going to shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a better way to say that. It's I, good. It's so good. I really, like, I really liked it. Lee was selling it to me. Mm -hmm. He's in the chat because he was like, okay, this is, it's like they continued Aliens, but he couldn't continue Aliens, so he made Raised by Wolves. Mm -hmm. It's basically really it. Like it's really good. I, season two has just started. I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, that is the best way to sell it. It's like, if you liked all the religion and like android stuff in prometheus and alien Which i Covenant. love prometheus mm, i love prometheus too like everyone hates legitimately everyone hates on prometheus and alien covenant and i'm like i that's actually legit favorite. love those two movies the only thing i dislike about both of those movies is the alien part of it <laughs> like take the alien part yeah. out of it and it's great and that's what and that's what you get with raised by wolves so when i felt similar because i well uh I wasn't, I don't have the nostalgia with aliens. I came to it late mm -hmm. and I, I love Prometheus. It just has all the elements of things that I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. And so the Raised by Wolves worked really well for me. Mm -hmm. What else have I been watching? Like those are the two, Peacemaker and Raised by Wolves are like the big ones. The Expanse just ended, which I mm -hmm. loved, adored that. That was so good. Um, what else have I been watching? Like, I'm trying to remember because I like, I have to like look at my phone real quick. So to cheat. Yeah, I absorb it. things so I forget. Yeah, it's like, what if I what if I watch? Like, I keep a running list just so I know what the hell I've been watching. Vox Machina, I was really into. Um, what have I watched? Lee wants me to tell you to watch Black Sails. Oh, I want. I do want to watch Black Sails. I do want to watch that. I am a trigger that. warnings for the first season, but they get better. I've heard, yeah, but I've heard that it's a lot of fun. I've I've heard nothing but good things. Actually, a show that I another. If I may sell you on another show that I've really absolutely so anytime. Far. This one, I I actually really think this show, this show, knowing no, it also has like very salient political messaging that okay. I'm like I'm here for. But um, Severance, have you heard of Severance? Okay, that's the one on Apple, right? With uh, yes. Adam Scott. Yes. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm dying to. It is one I love him, and two, it sounds really good. The concept? Do you know the concept or? No, like so the, the whole idea is and it's so trippy and the way they display it is so good and it's only been two episodes so far, but I legitimately love it. Um is this is a world where you can sign up to work for a, this company where when you go to work, you lose all your memories and it becomes like a version of yourself that only has memories of 
being at the job. Yeah. And then when you go home, you lose all the memories of the job. So you only, there's like two versions of yourself, the work self and the home self version of you. And so like the home, the work versions of them are like super corporatized where they have like, it's yeah. Melon Day. Like it's the, it's to pose their birthday. They don't even get to like sleep. Like the versions of them that show up to work. It's like, yeah, it's like you just like, they show up, but like they leave work and then they're instantly back at work again. Yeah. Cause that's all they, they reckon. That's all they like have. And so it's like two different versions of themselves. And they're like, yeah, you don't, we don't really get to sleep. So I just like to focus on the effects of sleep. Like, I feel like, oh, I've definitely slept. Like I'm more rejuvenated yeah. or like the show works. Like, oh, I must've like had like a, like a party last night because I feel drunk or whatever. And so it's like those things. Um, and they have like, it's just, it's so cool. And it's such an, it's such a commentary on corporate culture and yeah. like how corporations try to dehumanize you and make you only exist as like this, like, hi, yeah, let's do the, let's do the gate. Let's yeah. do the get to know each other games or like, this is everything's great at the corporate. Like it's that sort of like, like what the corporations would want you to be like as an ideal like yeah. employee and it's so fascinating and so well done and it's I like super trippy that. yeah i love that yeah okay i'll watch I have, I have a recommendation for you yes please if you haven't have you watched have you watched archive 81 yet no i've heard of it though okay. if that's ne netflix right it's on netflix but i also re i really recommend the podcast also okay i started oh, okay. listening to that it's after okay yeah, because I watched the show and I heard there's a podcast, so I started into the podcast, which I think I might like more. Okay, that's good to know because I love you know me an audio drama, so it's oh then you'll love it. It's I love very I love good, audio dramas. Very creepy. But Archive 81, the Netflix show, uh basically this guy gets hired. He's like his job before is to restore old tapes, either VHSs or like audio tapes, things like that. And they, they hire him to go through this archive and fix these tapes and listen through them. And these like old VHSs. Uh, and it's basically, he's watched these tapes of this woman who is like a grad student. And she's doing this project on this building called the Visser. And she's going through and interviewing people who live there. It's this old building. There's some, something, something weird happening there that she mm -hmm. can't quite explain. Uh, and so he's watching these and kind of putting them together. But basically his interaction with it is kind of bring him into something's otherworldly thing that mm. he was not intending. So almost kind of love crafting in a way that there's something else you don't quite understand. That sounds very much like, did I tell you about the Magnus archives? You haven't, but I, I, TikTok has been trying to get me to listen. If you like, if you like Archive 81, because that sounds very similar to Magnus archives. Okay. Um, and Magnus Archives is legitimately my favorite radio, audio drama of all time. Hands down. Well, period. I'm almost done with Archive 81. So let me just go ahead and awkwardly live uh, subscribe. I, I like, like I just wrote down Archive 81 <laughs> for myself because because that sounds great. And Magnus Archives sounds it's very, very similar. Yeah. I'm sure they have their own different flavors. So I don't I'm not like insinuating that they're copies of each other or anything like that, but they are very similar in, in concept. Basic idea is very similar where you start off the podcast and it's just this, uh, the Magnus archives is this basically it's like they, they archive weird stuff. Yeah. Like they're just like, people come in and like, tells like this weird thing happened to me and they just archive it. And you're following this character called the archivist who is okay. just reading different statements. Like his, his whole thing is just, he goes to the archives and like, all right, I'm going to read this statement out loud. And that's the podcast. He just reads a statement. And yeah. so you start off the show and it just feels like, very much like one-off creepy stories like oh this is a creepy story that he's reading and it's very well it's like super creepy like some of them are like yeah. especially the other episodes are like super terrifying but what gets even better is about like a few episodes in about like seven or eight episodes in you start to realize oh these are connected like that thing appeared here and that appeared here and then you start to like it starts to like like build up the tack yeah. board of stuff like you then it doesn't even draw attention to it it just like you start to notice the connections um, and then it's the way the world gets built out and yeah. the way you find out that all these things are connected is super cool. And it really builds to, uh, it's a five season long show and it ends and has a definitive story ending. Oh, like there's a definitive love end. Love that. That's uh, great. Yeah. They end it and it's like, this is the end. And I love how it ends. Um, and it's just the way that the story builds out and the, the ultimate way the lore gets revealed and where it goes, I think it's so cool. And it just escalates, but it's such a build that is, is just really wonderful. I, I cannot recommend like the Magnus Archives legitimately is my favorite audio drama of all time it is so good all right i'm in best best advice listen to an episode before you go to bed you'll unless you're like super terrified it's, oh, it's really I scary but i love scared. it mm -hmm. i love creepy i'm a huge silent hill fan like die hard oh then yeah so yes
then do it. It sounds I did, like, like you like Archive eighty one too. Yeah, I that's what I did. Like with 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 okay, with please. with Magnus Archives every every night. I listened to one before I went to bed, and it's so good. So all right, hey Robin, this is not uh, a convenient place for you to be. Yeah, that's I do that because that's my door's closed because my cat oh will my do God. exactly the same. She's uh, attached. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, okay, but, we'll take this question, and then we can. Do you, uh, I have not seen Search Party. I haven't either. I heard it's interesting because it's like comedic. I've heard of After Party, but not Search Party. So. I need to check it out. I uh, say again, over in your rear series with Jesse Trek comics. I really <laughs> can. Well, I would, now I would, that I, would. I know that Jesse's down to be on more regularly, I will ask you often because I this is so much fun. Yeah, I enjoy this, and we should read some Trek comics at some point. I would like, love to. I, I have. have I have don't a legit, know what's good. <laughs> oh, I have a legit, like, I have the complete graphic novel collection, which is over 150 comic, Star Trek comics. So I, yeah. can, I can give, and I've read everything. I've legitimately read every single Star Trek comic, and there's a lot. So well, I, hey, if you want to do the next month or month after, whatever works for you, I'm down. I, I, can I am interested in any recommendation. You what got. do you like? What would you, what would you like? Would I you, mean. Pick a, pick a, pick a series. Hmm. Do you want Deep Space Nine? Do you want? Yeah, I do want Deep Space Nine, but I, I'm I'm open to. I love. I like all of Star Trek. Okay. I just Deep Space Nine is my favorite. I can think of a few that would be fun for either Deep Space Nine or the Kelvin comics are like surprisingly really good too. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll I'll, I'll suggest some. Okay. We'll find something. So. Dope. All right. Well, um, I'll go ahead and now it's like nine thirty. I'll go and uh wrap it up here. Um. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the chat for hanging out. Thank you, Jesse. I don't, Jesse, do you want to plug anything before we end it? Uh, please. Um, yeah, go I'll ahead. just quick plug real quick. Uh, Jesse Gender, that's my channel with all my stuff on it. Um, so you can go subscribe to that. I also have a podcast called What the Frell that is about to end, where I was rewatching every episode of Farscape, but that is about to turn into the podcast called Jumpgate, where we're going to be re we're going to be watching every episode of Babylon Five with my wonderful yeah. friend Vera Weil from Council of Geeks. Um, oh, good. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, and then uh, from there, uh, if you want to just like, if you're new to me, two things that I would suggest, uh, my Sex and Star Trek series. I did the first videos out. I'm filming the second one uh, as we, not as we speak, but right now around this time. Um, it's a good look at like sex, sexuality, gender, and things like that. Hey, new, hey, buddy. Yeah, I was, I was watching, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like I speak about him and he appears. Um, so go check out that video or my Dark Souls video that just released on GameSpot. If you if you type in GameSpot Dark Souls and then look for the video with the thumbnail of my face on it, uh, that'll be the one. I am honestly legitimately extremely proud of that video. It is one of my favorite videos I've ever done. I also swear a lot in it. Uh, oh so you can you can hear that. So um, yeah, that's what I'd recommend. That's everything. And Newt is now now here with me. So you can get Yay. to say hi, Newt. Hi, buddy. I hi. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all my stuff well great uh thank you and again um all of jesse's links are in the description uh please check them out uh i'll be back tomorrow oddly <laughs> um what on the your own channel that's so weird. yeah i know uh we'll be talking about green arrow and black canary Ooh, fun yeah so shenanigans um yeah, so thank you all for hanging out. Um, I haven't uh, picked the schedule for March yet, so just wait until I do that, and I will tell you all what's happening. Um, until then, I'm going to play a lot of Horizon Forbidden West. So do it. hope you all have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>